Hi, this is Dr. Hayek and this video is about solubility and complex ion equilibria. In this video, we will be talking about solubility product. Before I start this video, let me introduce the outline of this chapter, where I will be talking about different topics, so please refer to the corresponding video for the topic of interest. Now, when an ionic solid is added to water, two competing reactions occur. The first one is the dissolution reaction, which means that the solid will get dissociated into its corresponding ions. In this example, we can see that we have calcium fluoride that will dissociate to give one ion calcium Ca2+, plus two ions fluoride F-. Another competing reaction is the formation of the uh, solid again and therefore you have the cation will have an electrostatic attraction to the anions, the fluorides, and then to form the solid again, the calcium fluoride. Ultimately, a dynamic equilibrium will be established and therefore the solid will give the cation and the anions and vice versa. For this equilibrium, we can write the following solubility product, which is Ksp, Sp for solubility product, is going to be equal to the concentration of Ca2 plus multiplied by the concentration of F minus. Now, as you can see, this is an equilibrium constant, which means it's written usually the concentration of a products divided by the concentration of reactants. But since reactants now, they are at the solid state, or the ionic solid that we have here is at the solid state, we do not include it in the expression of the Ksp. So now, looking at this expression, you can see that the power of Ca2 plus is 1. And this is taken from the coefficient of the equilibrium. And the power of F minus is 2. And this is also taken from the coefficient of the equilibrium. Now this solubility product is a constant value at a constant temperature. It only changes when we change the temperature. Let's further explain this by looking at the dissolution of silver iodide that gives silver Ag plus plus iodide I minus. Now the solubility product is given by the product of concentration of Ag plus multiplied by the concentration of I minus. Now why this is a constant? Looking at the mixture here, I can see that every time two ions leave the solution to the solid, there will be two other ions leaving the solid to the solution, and therefore the number of ions is always constant in the solution, and therefore the solubility product will always be constant. Now if we change the temperature, the solubility of the solid will, will change, and therefore the Ksp will also change. Now how can we calculate the solubility product of the dissolution of an ionic solid? Let's take a look on this example where we have the bismuth sulfide that will dissolve to give the bismuth Bi3 plus plus the sulfide the S2 minus. Now the solubility of this solid is given as 1.0 times 10 to the power minus 15. Now the expression of the Ksp, it can be written as the product of squared the concentration of bismuth multiplied by the cubic concentration of sulfide. So if we write this equilibrium again, let's take a look. Initially, we had no bismuth nor sulfide. This is at the initial state. Now after the change occurs, where 1.0 times 10 to the power minus 15 molar of the bismuth sulfide will dissolve, we will get 2 times 1.0 times 10 to the power minus 15 of the bismuth Bi3 plus and 3 times 1.0 times 10 to the power minus 15 of the sulfide S2 minus. Now the 2 here and the 3 are taken from the coefficient of the equilibrium and this is based on the stoichiometry rules. At equilibrium I will have 2 times 1.0 times 10 to the power minus 15 of the bismuth and 3 times 1.0 times 10 to the power minus 15 of the sulfide. And these are the concentrations at equilibrium for these ions. 
Now to calculate the KSP of this dissolution, we can simply replace the concentration of bismuth and the concentration of sulfide by their values and therefore we get KSP is equal to 1.1 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 73. Now you should note that for the KSP the units change from one equilibrium to another. That's why we do not indicate any unit for the KSP. KSP like this means that the solubility of the solid in water is very small. And we can see it from 1.0 times 10 to the power minus 15 number, which is a very small number. Now how else can we use the KSP? Let's take a look on the example of dissolution of copper 2 iodate. That's going to give me copper 2 plus 2 iodates. The KSP of this equilibrium is given as 1.4 times 10 to the power minus 7. So now, how can I calculate the solubility of copper 2 iodate? Now, we know that the expression of KSP is written as the concentration of copper 2 multiplied by squared the concentration of iodate. Now let's write the equilibrium again. In the initial state, I had no copper 2 nor iodate. Now when the corresponding amount of copper 2 iodate dissolves, I will get the same amount which is S for copper 2 and twice which is 2S for iodate. So now at equilibrium, I will have S molar for copper 2 and 2s molar for iodate. Replacing these two concentrations in the expression of the KSP, I get KSP is equal to s multiplied by 2s squared. Now rearranging this expression, I will get KSP is equal to 4s cubic. Now s is going to be equal to the cubic root of KSP divided by 4. When I replace the KSP by its value, I get the solubility of copper 2 iodate in water is equal to 3.3 multiplied by 10 to the power minus 3 molar. Now notice that the unit of the solubility is always molar regardless of the unit of KSP which we don't include it here. Now in this table you can find the KSP values for many different ionic solids in water. And these KSP values will help us to calculate the solubility of each ionic solid in water at 25 degrees. Now remember that these values will not be valid if we change the temperature. Now, how can I compare the solubility of different ionic solids based on the values of their corresponding KSPs? Now let's take a look on this example. I will be comparing the solubility of silver iodide, copper 1 iodide, and calcium sulfate. Looking at their KSP values, I will have 1.5 times 10 to the power minus 16 for silver iodide, 5.0 times 10 to the power minus 12 for copper iodide, and 6.1 times 10 to the power minus 5 for calcium sulfate. Since the formula of getting the solubility is the same for all these solids, which is S equals to the square root of KSP, I can order these solids from the most soluble to the least soluble based on the values of their KSPs. Therefore, the solid with the highest value of KSP, which is in this case calcium sulfate, will be the most soluble in water. And the solid with the lowest value of KSP, which is in this case the silver iodide, will be the least soluble in water. Now, when we look at the calculated solubilities, we can see that this is true. The solubility of calcium sulfate is 7.8 times 10 to the power minus 3 molar. However, the solubility of silver iodide is 1.2 times 10 to the power minus 8 molar, which is the smallest between all three solubilities. Now, can I always use the values of KSP to compare the solubilities of ionic solids? In this example, we will see that I will not be able to use the values of the KSP to compare the solubilities of the ionic solids. Why? Because at every time, the formula of the solubility will change. Now, as you can see, for copper sulfide, the solubility is equal to the square root of KSP. 
However, for the silver sulfide, I can see that the solubility is equal to the cubic root of Ksp divided by 4. And for bismuth sulfide, the solubility is equal to the fifth root of Ksp divided by 108. And here, by looking at the order, we can see that bismuth sulfide, which has the lowest Ksp, is the most soluble in water. However, for the copper sulfide, is going to be the least soluble in water. Again, by looking at the calculated solubilities, we can confirm this order. I hope this video was helpful to you, so please like, share, and subscribe, and I will see you next time.